So welcome to game two between Art of Turtle and Dentarg. Art of Turtle starting in the bottom right-hand corner as the... I'm going to switch the colors on this, actually. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Art of Turtle starting as the blue Zerg. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Dentarg starting as the red Protoss. I'm doing that color swap because with this color set previously, it's particularly the orange and the gray, I saw overlap where I wasn't able to see units when they were on top of each other. And that, that's the excuse I make for <laughs> missing that Reaver drop from a few casts ago. Uh, anyway, in all honesty, in game one, I was looking at the supply counts and I was like, man, considering Dentark's supply right now, I expect Art of Turtle to lose in the next two minutes, let alone I don't see how he's going to win the game, was kind of my thought effectively. We are seeing a pylon down to the natural expansion. Again, it's possible we'll see Gateway or Forge, but it looked like Dentark had just overproduced probes. He was actually, a, honestly, an end game probe count. So doing the math, if you... Take, so I believe the most efficient, and people correct me if I'm wrong on this, I believe it is one and a half probes per the number of patches. So you, there's nine patches here. Trust me, I stopped the, I counted and then stopped the cast and restarted after doing the math. So about 14 probes is full saturation on just the minerals. So it's 14 plus three in the assimilator. So 17 times two, which I should have done the math of what's that, what's that, 34, 34? So 34 probes is about max saturation for two bases and anything beyond that, you're not really getting all that much more out of it. Looks like we're seeing a spawning pool on 11. A little bit of an, uh, an adjustment on Arter Turtle's build. Oftentimes he likes opening 12 hatch. I guess this is the second time he's done this build against Dentarg and perhaps he only likes 12 hatches versus Terran on four player maps. The probe doing a good amount of harassment here is gonna delay, well, might delay, putting a pylon down. Are we seeing a gateway first? No, we're seeing forge first on top of this. Now, you can't, the probe ends up getting annihilated by that drone. So, nice play from the drone. This pylon can still be canceled. So, I think it is worth it because you end up losing 33, minim, uh, 33 minerals, but you end up slowing down the hatchery significantly. Let's see if he leaves the pylon. No, in fact, goes ahead and cancel it, gets his, his money back. Spawning pool finishing just now. Let's see if we see a full grouping of Zerglings or just this typical. Uh, we are just seeing the typical two from Arter Turtle. He's getting a drone scout in, actually scouted the correct direction. Perhaps moving his overlord to the north and not seeing a probe, he realized that he had to be at another location. Wanders in, sees the pylon, the forge, the cannon warping in, as well as the nexus before forge. And we'll see how he opts to, to play in the follow-up. Another probe scout moving out for Dentarg. Wants to make sure he gets that value, valuable information. Honestly, considering how long he was able to keep it alive in game one, I actually feel like that's an intelligent play. One Zergling making its way towards the front. The second Zergling getting distracted on attack move and working on that probe. We do see an extractor down. There is already a drone making its way to the three o'clock location. So it looks like Art of Turtle once again, going to move into that three base play of some form and another. Backing that Zergling off, seeing that gateway, took an initial hit. I do like the Zergling being camped there just to see the Zealot production and whether that Zealot moves off. That you, As long as you keep a larva or two somewhere, usually two larvae available. When the Zealot starts moving out, you have plenty of time more or less to, to deal with it. And I feel like that's the better part of Valor. Sneak out sneak out the drones you can and then make sure you're dealing with... Uh... I almost wonder, like mathematically, is it better to just leave some drones in the background at certain timings or is it more cost efficient to dr just drop a sunken colony? And I'm wondering if anyone's ever done cost analysis on that sort of thing. Anyway, moving to layer once again, it looks like we are going to see potentially a mutilisk opener once again, but this is again giving full scouting information to Dentarg. And so he's going to go ahead and I assume get that cybernetics core up, grab the Stargate to follow. The Zergling is sitting at the front. It will see the first Zealot being produced eventually. Uh, and this feels like, I don't know, feels like a little bit of a late Zealot. Decent saturation at the natural expansion, decent saturation here at the main and the nine o'clock base, or sorry, the three o'clock base coming up momentarily. Only the single Zergling, there's, here's the other thing. There's no way this single Zergling, okay, two additional Zerglings have been produced. It's very difficult for even just two Zerglings to kill a probe until Zergling speed is finished. Zergling speed is upgrading here. We already see a Stargate warping in, Art of Turtle able to see it. And again, with all of this timing and the vision being seen here from Dentark, he should have a good idea of whether he can go ahead and get an Overlord kill or not. And also, if he can keep this probe alive in this base even longer and see when the eggs are, uh, basically how many larvae are being preserved and things along those lines, he also, 
uh, might even be able to get some bonus kills. So the Overlord seeing also Citadel of Dune. So at least for Art of Turtle side, he's getting all of the information comparatively. We do see three drones at the three o'clock location. The Zerglings kind of, I'm not sure why they were moving up that direction. They're starting to fan out and make their way back towards the main. One's, uh, two Zealots, they're guarding the front door. Some decent saturation overall, but you can see this, yeah, this probe scout's just staying alive absolutely forever. And having that critical scouting information as a Protoss player lets you cut corners and make certain decisions. Like, okay, where do I warp in my cannons? Uh, things along those lines. We do see a bunch of Zerglings sitting outside the natural. Three Zealots there and this cannon should be enough to go ahead and defend it, particularly with a fourth, well, no, no fourth Zealot on the way just yet. The Corsair making its way across. Spire's not even finished, which means an initial Overlord is going to be at risk. It looks like this one, at least initially, is going to be able to go ahead and sneak out. The probe was finally killed at the main, but uh, and actually not going for the close overlord. So now attacking that close overlord, there is a potential that this Corsair is, yeah, in danger town because we see two sets of Scourge being produced. Is that three sets? No, just two sets at the main. Might, still might be able to get the overlord and go ahead and retreat. And Dentarg needs to play it exactly that way: is get the one overlord kill and then flee. So there's the overlord. Go ahead and get out of here. Maybe check that 3 o'clock base. It looks like the Scourge are in hot pursuit. Hydralis Den, another hatchery being built there on the front. Corsair seeing a lot... Uh, second Corsair seeing a lot of those Zerglings uh, produced right there. Overlord already sitting across the 3 o'clock location. Here's the thing. Previously, we saw a Dark Templar and he, wandering, and he's going to be able to go ahead and see that Protoss Templar archives. We saw that Dark Templar do all sorts of damage because Art of Turtle, yeah, he had an Overlord overhead. But now he's preemptive. I like it. Being preemptive, going ahead, getting a creep colony here, going to go ahead and turn that into a sunken colony. And between the sunken colony, it doesn't matter how many Corsairs are up there. He can respond to the Corsairs, but at least he doesn't have to worry about his drone line uh, as much. One Dark Templar moving out. Let's see if these Zerglings are going to be able to get out of the way before they get picked off. I, I think it works for Zerglings as well when there's an initial attack. It looks like two Dark Templar are out in the field. When there's an initial attack, if it kills the unit in one shot, it doesn't give you the alert. It looks like the Dark Templar are going to skip the Zerglings. They're making their way towards the natural expansion. Hydalus Din is up, working on Hydalus speed. So I believe Art of Turtle wants to turn this into more of a contained situation. And I think I might have missed a Corsair dying. At least I don't see the second Corsair out in the field anywhere. Should have maybe watched it being chased down by those Scourge. But the Dark Templar making their way up. There are two Dark Templar here, so they can tank some hits, wander up, and get some drone kills. The drone's getting into the fight as well, and one Dark Templar very easily killed. The second Dark Templar having some trouble. He's trying to pocket himself in the corner to buy some bonus kills, but the Hydralisks are there, does get a bonus kill, gets two bonus kills, but not fully financially worth it right there. And there's the second Corsair, actually, it looks like. So the Corsair is still up. The Zergling's repositioning a little bit. Artitrill actually could press forward at this stage with the Hydralisks he has. He does have... He does have an Overlord, looks like it retreated back towards the main. The Zealots now have Lake Speed. They're going to go ahead and press, uh, try to push those Zerglings off the front. But you can see Dentarg a little bit concerned about this. He's like, okay, between the units that can be produced from Artur Troll, even though he's playing a little bit defensively right now, it is possible that he could turn around and potentially go for a bust, something along those lines. Plus, he's got that Spire Tech. You can always have a uh, quick tech switch, which is very dangerous to deal with. We only have a single cannon in the main. We have no cannon in the natural expansion. I honestly feel like this is a little bit underutilized by Zerg at uh, here is maybe flying the Scourge, see if there's any sort of can at the natural, and then if it's not there, look for an opportunity for a tech switch to go ahead and kill a bunch of probes, even with just five Mutalisks uh, across uh, that natural. We see six gateways being, sorry, seven gateways with the one on the front. The Zealots moving forward want to see what they can do. Some Hydralisks were just starting to position forward now that Overlord speeds there. Range and Spines won is just finishing, and another grouping of Hydralis being produced. And I feel like Dentarg might be in a little bit of trouble here. He has a little bit of a supply lead again. He's again at 53 probes, overproducing probes once again for having uh, two bases and not being able to establish a third for quite some time. Does not have Psy Storm. I don't think. Does he have Psy Storm? Might have Psy Storm. No, he does have Psy Storm. Okay. Ignore me! Able to get a decent size storm on top of those Hydralisks, but at least with that initial size storm expended and no additional High Templar. Actually, this High Templar needs to be very careful that it doesn't get picked off. That's an unfortunate place to build your second High Templar. Overlord absorbing a few hits. Oh, it doesn't even manage to, to spring out. Looks like level one weapons will finish at the very least. And Art of Turtle taking an opportunity to peek in, pick off a cannon before the Zelts are really able to defend it. Second Overlord 
moving and taking a few additional shots. And now, yeah, Art of Turtle really pressing this. And Duntar in a bit of trouble. He has more High Templar out, so he might have some high Side Storm to defend it. He's not plopping down additional cannons, though. Art of Turtle in the red with that Overlord loss. It looks like the Corsairs wandered in to go ahead and take some Overlords across that 3 o'clock base. And continuing to apply that pressure with these with these uh, Hydralisks out of position, trying to force Art of Turtle both directions. Okay, are you going to defend your third? Are you going to stop these Overlords from being killed? Or are you going to just continue to pound my natural expansion? And that is giving him time to establish additional cannons and shell up and get critical Psy Storm a little bit. But he's expending these Psy Storms and not really clearing out the Hydralisk force. And the Zealots not really getting out on top. They're getting picked off one by one. The cannon's still not warped in, so Art of Turtle might be able to end it right here. Right now. Pushing into the natural expansion. Second cannon down. This natural expansion completely exposed. And Dentarg in a lot of trouble now. Just a handful of Zealots trying to come down to defend it. The probes aren't coming off the line to defend it. And that should be GG. Another Psystorm only hitting a handful of Hydralisks. And the Zealots aren't there to immediately follow up and pick off the weakened Hydralisks. So the Hydralisks continuing to rain down destruction. They're at the very least going to be able to breach the natural expansion. And Art of Turtle continuing to flood units forward. Off his three bases. And just, yeah, you can see it in the upper left-hand corner continuing to pump this. There's GG from Dentarg. We'll move on to game three, but Art of Turtle, good job defending the Corsair at three o'clock and also ignoring that and concentrating on multiple fronts. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.